Today News Update. A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Thursday, June 16. So glad you could join us. A St. George family is in mourning following the fatal shooting of 27-year-old Romaine Mayors of Greens. Police discovered his lifeless body at Fairview Heights in St. George around 1 o'clock this morning. When Barbados Day visited the scene, St. George South MP Minister Dwight Sutherland was there. Sutherland, who described Mayors as a son, expressed shock at his death and condemned gun violence. This is very sad. I'm here standing at the corner of Middleton and Fairview where the incident occurred. I am hoping that we catch the person who committed this this vicious act of death by gun. As a government, we, we are trying our best, working with the Royal Barbados Police Force and the other forces in this country um, to stem violence, especially gun violence, and to, and to see it on your, your doorstep, not only in your constituency, I mean, anywhere gun violence and death by, by gun is, 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 is a problem for us. But to wake up this morning and to see it on your doorstep in St. George South, in a very peaceful neighborhood of Fairview, and then to know it is your dear friend, um, whom I call a son, you know, I treat him like a son, Romain, this is indeed sad. Sutherland said the senseless death of the young man has severely affected the family. I met with his mom this morning. I am heading back to the house there with her. And she too is very sad. His brother Ross also. So I, I, you don't know what to tell a parent at a time when she lost a 27-year-old son and who was dear to her, a very loving young man who would give his last to you and just laugh. He had a, a, a very infectious laugh. Barbados and the rest of the region must act now to ramp up food and energy security. The visiting managing director of the International Monetary Fund today advised that she went one-on-one -on -one with President of the Barbados Economic Society, Dr. Simon Natrum, and students of the University of the West Indies at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Centre today. She explained that because of the war in Ukraine and continuing supply chain interruptions, inflation remains a pressing concern for many countries, but she assured the IMF was ready to assist. We need inflation under control because price stability is critical for growth. But to bring inflation under control, that means tightening of financial conditions. And when this happens, typically we see withdrawal of capital. So at the IMF now we are working hard to anticipate which of our members may face balance of payment uh, constraints. And I can tell you we are ready to step up. We have 700 billion lending capacity and we would deploy as much as necessary. And actually I tell our members that are with high level of debt, don't wait, don't wait. Move towards uh, uh, programs uh, that would help you protect your economy because if when capital leaves and nothing comes uh, to, to guarantee uh, stability, uh, then countries may find themselves in a very, very tough uh, spot. The IMF chief added that everyone will have to adjust their behaviors to get through these tough times. We are for some tough time this year, next year, because of this tightening of financial conditions and the consequences of it. Don't take it as bad because we need financial stability and we need price stability. So investment, investors would feel comfortable to invest. Uh, there would be jobs, there would be growth. Uh, so we have to go through this uh, tougher, tougher time. Uh, and uh, your prime minister very wisely was turning to the nation saying, look, change your behavior. If you can reduce uh, uh, travel single person in a car, you know, ride share, do it. If you have a garden, pay attention to it, water it, because we, all, we need to all uh, adjust to this uh, tougher, tougher time. The IMF team has given government's housing program the thumbs up 
Prime Minister Mia Motley led the visitors on a tour of the Home Ownership Providing Energy Project at Vespera Gardens, Lancaster St. James, that offers affordable housing solutions. We kept this land at six million dollars a square meter. Uh -huh. Okay, to just cover the costs and just to have a little to cover administration. We actually don't even sell the land to them. We no, buy it because we give them this area and we pay for all the photovoltaics things on the roof. We pay for it over the long term. This is so one of the done, best innovations. Uh, yeah, we, what we've made it, we now made this whole segment a thousand people in Morris bankable. Mm -hmm. So we rounded up one billion dollars in mortgage loan financing for them because the banks are so keen to finance them. Mm -hmm. They have twenty five percent equity. Mm -hmm. Yes. Twenty five percent. Yeah. 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 So, so they're bankable uh, before, and the nice thing is they don't have to put any money of their own because we give them the land. So we have the equity. Now we actually this is the middle one. We actually have some that are below this now, which are basic low income, but that's coming out of Ghana. Um, they're helping us between wood and cement wood, and those will probably come in at a cost of construction between over 40, 45,000 US, they're fine tuning the numbers now. Mm -hmm. But then you have to add the, the top, which is another 11, 12,000 US. Mm -hmm. But even so, for low income, that then opens up a whole host of people who might be itinerant vendors who might not have that, um, maybe domestics who may not have that capacity. And then above this, there's another design. Mm -hmm. Four persons above this earning over 2,500 US a month. There was a festive-like atmosphere in Warrens this morning at the official launch of the Republic Bank Pandemonium. The bank is sponsoring the popular cropover event to the tune of $85,000. The pan event will be held on July 24 at the National Botanical Gardens. Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer Anthony Clerk said, the bank is happy to donate the money to make Pandemonium a ringing success and support the National Festival, which returns after a two-year hiatus. Our support for Pandemonium is all about ensuring Pan lives on as an important legacy bequeathed to us by generations past to capture the hearts of future generations as well as those who visit our shores. As a member of the corporate community and a signatory to the principles of responsible banking, we see Pan as both a sound investment in the preservation of culture and investment in an art form that also offers jobs creation. Amidst un unfolding events on the global stage, we all are making an effort to return to a path of healing and growth. It is reassuring to see the resurgence of cultural events such as pandemonium. What we've longed for most on the road to recovery from the pandemic is safely celebrating Caribbean culture and the simple enjoyment of good friends and good music. Chief Executive Officer of the National Cultural Foundation, Carol roberts Reefer, welcomed Republic Bank's support, but she made clear it's not about the money, but more so a partnership that leads to the development of culture and heritage. To look at the backstory to that, the level of commitment, the level of dedication, the value of relationships, both corporate and cultural, when we all come together, not for the benefit of the individual entity, not only for the benefit of the festival, all of those things are important, but for the benefit of the country, where young people have a safe, responsible, vibrant, empowering opportunity to learn to play Pan, which then brings our culture and our heritage together. It's a win-win-win. Regional and international news coming up after this short break. Cure Oxygen is way more than just water. We infuse pristine water with over one billion tiny oxygen bubbles using our state-of-the-art process. The benefits of additional oxygen are huge, from strengthening your immune system to increasing energy levels, stamina, and sports performance. And that's not all. It also improves skin health, helps you sleep better, and reduces stress. Join the movement of people experiencing the benefits of Cure Oxygen. It's not hype, it's science. In Jamaica, security officials are considering a possible extension to the curfew in Spanish Town as gang wars continue. Ocean Masters of Television Jamaica tells us more. The Member of Parliament for St. Catherine Central, Olivia Grange, has since condemned the incident. Well, what we're experiencing is people driving into the constituency and 
shooting at innocent individuals and other persons, and this is now creating great attention. Since Tuesday, a curfew has been imposed in a number of communities, but even with the curfew in place, a woman was killed last night in the community of Homestead. She has been identified as 44-year-old Nikisha Pottinger. It's understood that the woman was told by the police to stay away from Homestead following a recent fatal shooting. Her fiancé, however, says that's not true. The man, who did not want to appear on camera, told us that Nikisha received several gunshots as she tried to run away from the gunman last night. He told our news team that he was the one who rushed her to hospital. Overcome with tears, he recounted her last words. She said that tell the kids them she loved them. Because I thought she was going to make it, you know. But it seemed like she didn't. She knew she was going to make it. She said tell the kids them I love them. And I must remember the promise I made her 15 years ago. So I must behave, keep myself out of certain things. All right, um, but it's hard to keep that promise. No. In the meantime, National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang is not ruling out an extension of the curfew in the market district in Spanish Town. On the international front, Brazilian police have found human remains in their search for missing British journalist Dom Phillips and Brazilian indigenous expert Bruno Pereira after a suspect confessed to killing them in the Amazon rainforest. It took Brazil's police 10 days to find the place where indigenous expert Bruno Pereira and British journalist Don Phillips were allegedly buried. Policemen said Amarildo da Costa, a local fisherman, confessed to the killing and led them to the burial site, more than three kilometers into the Amazon jungle. This is where the crime happened, where we found the bodies buried. Human remains found there will be compared to DNA samples obtained from the families of Pereira and Phillips. The journalist's wife, Alessandra Sampaio, has issued a statement saying that the family can now find closure. But she also says this should be the first step of a broader investigation into crimes committed in the Amazon. Pereira and Phillips were allegedly ambushed on their way back from the Javari Valley an area twice the size of Japan and home to the world's largest number of uncontacted indigenous tribes. When they went missing on June the 5th, local communities organized search parties and asked the government for help. Joel Rodriguez, who worked with Bruno Pereira for 11 years, told us they had both been threatened for trying to stop illegal fishing in the reservation. Some months ago, we followed Pereira on the same path he took Dom Phillips, part of research for a book he was writing about conservation in the Amazon. The indigenous expert was helping Javari tribes track down trespassers and stop them from stealing fish. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbinistoday.com. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. Sign up for our breaking news alerts by WhatsApp. We're also on our Zoom and Medium bus terminals as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.